I was about to put together a video on the Ridge Racer series, and I do still plan to, though it might take me nine years to do, but I got a wee bit distracted. Turns out there's a game in the Ridge Racer series I'd never heard of, and after playing it, well, it's certainly a unique little curio in the power sliding pantheon of Namco's racers. Critical Velocity isn't specifically a Ridge Racer game, it's a spin-off, or a wheel spin-off if you want to really lean into the dad jokes, which I do. Really, the game has little in common with Ridge Racer beyond three things. It has a car from the Ridge Racer series in it, which I wasn't able to unlock so you won't see it being used here. B. It was made by the racing team at Namco to keep them busy while Ridge Racer on PSP was being made. And 3. The city it takes place in includes the original Ridge Racer's track, which, to be fair, is pretty cool. Beyond that, well, Critical Velocity is less Ridge Racer, a more GTA 3 meets Burnout via Driver, crossed with Final Fantasy and a wee bit of Yakuza dribbled on top for good measure. Like I said, a unique little curio. Now, don't get me wrong, and I'm ruining the fun of building up the anticipation here I know, but Critical Velocity isn't great. I mention all those great games it has something even just a tiny bit in common with, but by no means am I saying it competes with them quality-wise. It's at best good fun, but mostly just a bit of a 6 out of 10 time. Oh, and quick aside, while I remember, apologies for the juddering image and interlacing issues in the recording, I had to jury-rig a crappy capture solution for my PS2 as my usual bit of kit got broken during last year's house move. It probably annoys me more than you, but hey, I need to get this stuff out there. But yeah, critical velocity. You play as Tidus McCloud, our Final Fantasy hero in a car, a man-child who drives dangerously, stares a lot at the sexy lady who drives another car, has a sidekick, talks to a stern policeman, and no, I have no idea to be honest. The story's all in Japanese. Most of the rest of the game, handily, is in English, but the narrative is very much impenetrable even for someone with the sheer overwhelming brain power like me does. It's gangs and car chases and even, ooh, new comparison, a bit of Chase HQ thrown in, and I'm sure it's melodramatic garbage at times too. That's the Final Fantasy nod, along with our main character's general appearance. But if I don't follow the story, why do I mention it? Well, that's one of the big deviations from the Ridge Racer formula. The dev team had a bit of downtime between Ridgey projects, and instead of letting them sit about with their thumbs wedged neatly up their backsides, Namco Brass put the devs onto a new project. Hey gang, that GTA thing is popular, do something like that, quickly, and without a giant budget or any real desire on our part to make it a real success or to push it out worldwide. So, rather than another arcade racer, Critical Velocity was produced, with an open world and a storyline and police chases and all that GTA adjacent stuff, even though GTA wasn't very popular in Japan. You really don't get this sort of gap filler of a game from major studios these days, do you? I also mention the story because the first time you see any of the many, rather lengthy cutscenes in the game, they are unskippable. So while I had no interest in what was going on, nor any idea of what was going on, I did have to sit through these scenes. Understandably, it got burned into my head there was a story being rather heavily leaned on throughout Critical Velocity. And so it was, Ridge Racer was dragged out of pure arcade land and thrust into pure home video game land by bolting a storyline and other accoutrements onto it. An experiment, a muckabout, an actual bit of risk. The next deviation came via the actual world. Ridge Racer was always known for offering a selection of tracks, just a few in the initial set of games expanding to, well, more as the series progressed. Critical Velocity drove even further away from the Ridgey theme there by setting the game in the entire open region of Prio City. Some 8 by 9 kilometers of skyscrapers, freeways, deserts and mountains. It's ambitious. It's not a particularly interesting city, sure, and it's not like I'm getting Burnout Paradise-style pangs of glee just from pootling around, even when you break up the scenery by going into the countryside regions. But there's variety, and there's excitement to be had as you get smashed up by a tram in the middle of the road, or get smashed up by a truck on an intersection, or get smashed up on a central reservation. Bridges! It, it's got bridges! It's decidedly half-decent, and a lovely little, well, big, pivot from what the devs were doing in mainline Ridge Racers at the time. 
The game plays out in a series of missions, each taking place across a small subsection of the overall world map. Generally, during missions, it's still open and you can often go anywhere, pretty much, but realistically, and even though you can ignore the massive chevrons telling you where to go, it's not something where your optimal route is open to interpretation. A mission that sees you chasing a car to smash it up before it gets smashed up by a tram truck central reservation is easily failed by going even a little off-piste, so there's little in the way of jazz-like improvisation at play here, despite the jazz soundtrack. As well as the regions outside of the city proper, some missions mix up the setting a bit more by seriously limiting the size of where it takes place. Movie lots, inside steel mills, screeching around 90 degree corners down a winding back alley. It changes up what's expected of you in how you drive, and it genuinely does offer a nice break from the monotony that does set in as you get further along in the missions. There's only so many times you can be chased by rubber banding gang members in their black sedans while winding through city streets at 200 kilometers an hour before it loses its edge after all. I don't know, it, it's a mix. I found myself wanting to play more of the game far more than I expected, and that's likely because of the bite-sized mission structure. But at the same time, the suddenly escalating difficulty level making things tediously frustrating to try and succeed at, and the ever-present feeling that I could be doing anything else in my time other than yet another basic ass two-minute car chase, safe to say it works against critical velocity. You've got elements lifted directly from Burnout and Konami's Thrill Drive, another comparison, as you're encouraged to engage in risky driving through the civilian populace, all just trying to get to work or go buy a sack of lemons or whatever it is normal people do in the day. Risky driving like near misses or exciting power sliding or stuff like that is rewarded with an increase to your boost meter and, would you believe it, boosting boosts you! What? I know, right? It's an additional layer to the action and helps out with the against-the-clock nature of a lot of missions, but given the strength of that rubber banding you see in your AI competitors and enemies, boosting becomes fairly moot, to be honest. A moot poodle. You'll also see that rubber banding in the police who chase you, the police who see any minor infraction you make in the sections between missions, like maybe accidentally running a red light on a busy intersection, say. They give chase, they are unrelenting, to a point at least, and it's surprisingly easy for them to pull you over. When they do, you're hit with a flat rate fine of 30 grand, which early on is a significant number to be docked from your purse. As with all flat rate fines, though, it stops having much of an impact on you the richer you become. Now, I'm not going to get into the specifics of flat rate taxation systems, but yeah. And, of course, you can tune your cars, just like in the Ridgy Racery games, building them up from a cool-looking sportsmobile with the handling of a particularly crap tank to a much uglier mega sportsmobile that pings from 0 to 200 in the blink of an eye and sticks to the tarmac like glue. But glue you can take corners with, so not super glue, maybe PVA, I don't know. It's easier to get around corners, that's, that's what I mean. So there's a sense of progression in the game too, and it makes for one of those wonderful situations where even at the end of the game, your very first vehicle can still be a viable option to take into the very last mission. I want to make a Pokemon comparison here to be hit with the kids, but I have no bloody idea with that series. You fund all this, the car tuning and buying new cars I mean, by earning credits which come from your performances in missions. As well as rating how quickly you complete a task, you're also looking to damage your car as little as possible, to allow as little as possible damage to friendly cars, if there are any, to meet a few other criteria, and to get as many action points as you can during the, the action. You get these via your dangerous and exciting driving, as well as boost to your boost meter. Probably should have said that before when talking about boosty, but what can you do? Not like I have a sub-editor here helping me out. You can also earn additional credits in side missions, which pop up throughout the city and see you taking on tasks like being an ambulance driver and heading out to ram into sick people. I mean, technically you're going to help them, but I did find myself driving straight into them almost every time. Or being a cop, or being a cab driver, or that sort of thing. They're distractions, they're very basic, and they absolutely add an element of a grind to critical velocity, but they work. It's a microcosm of the whole game, it's nothing special or surprising or even really that interesting, but it's a decent enough distraction to keep you chipping away at it for a while. All of this comes together to make, I've already said, a game that's a 6 out of 10 in the most part. 
I actually was aiming to complete Critical Velocity legitimately before two things happened. One, I learned it would be about 8 to 10 hours for me to actually finish the thing, which felt like way too much for a game that was dragging after 7 or 8 main story missions. And B, my save file got corrupted, so I just abandoned that particular dream and downloaded a save from GameFAQs with almost everything already finished and unlocked. Hey ho! Critical Velocity is a fun curio, and a decent enough thing to seek out so long as you don't break your back sourcing a copy of the game. It makes too many missteps to be comfortably on the verge of greatness. The unpredictable AI cars on the roads are ruinous. The unforgiving nature of practically every item you come into contact with, smashing you into a full stop as they do and giving you a quick education on why most open world games allow you to simply go straight through plenty of fences and smaller obstacles, it's crap. The difficulty curve quickly goes vertical. I can't hand on heart say it's a good game. But there's an air of mystery, I guess, around Critical Velocity. Why was so much of the game in English, despite it apparently never being intended for worldwide release? Why was it one and done with no more games based on or around it made after this one? Why has it seemingly flown under the radar in the most part for the past 20 years, even though it comes from the stable that produced some of the finest arcade racing games of a generation? Well, maybe that last bit is because Ridge Racer as a franchise is largely forgotten in the modern conversation, so why would a little-known spin-off be something anybody can be bothered to look into or recommend? Yeah, that, that's, that's probably part of it. But yeah, there we are. Critical Velocity. It's genuinely interesting, it's worth a play if you don't expect much and don't have to do too many backflips in order to secure a copy, and it's not the worst distraction when trying to put together a video about the Ridge Racer series proper. 6 out of 10. Thanks for watching, and thanks to my patrons on Patreon for supporting me in this endeavour of playing delightfully mediocre games on what we can safely say is a console format approaching the point where we can actually call it ancient. I'm off to practice saying Ridge Racer in the mirror. Bye!